Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you how Kobe Bryant is making life really difficult for LeBron James. Got to hear that. I'm Colin Coward. I'll tell you why the Jim Harbaugh doubters cuckoo are crazy. Even Whitlock, speak for yourself. On a Friday, starts right now. We got college football all weekend long. Uh, I'm excited. All right, hello and welcome. We're joined tonight by a couple of Super Bowl champs, Greg Jennings and Seth Joyner. Let's start with Ezekiel Elliott. While the outcome of Elliott's appeal of his six-game suspension is still pending, the NFLPA has filed a restraining order in a Texas federal court to block any suspension from taking effect, alleging that the appeal process was unfair and there was a, quote, league orchestrated conspiracy to hide information that would have exonerated Elliott. Cowherd, what's your reaction to the charges from the NFLPA? I just don't get it. Like, <laughs> so the league would be anti Dallas Cowboys. That is akin to McDonald's tomorrow being anti-French fry. We're against the industry. The Cowboys are the number one product by a stretch. They were the highest rated game on NBC, Fox, Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football. I don't get it. I mean, I just honestly, why would you do that? Well, this is what happens when you try to get involved in law and order, criminal punishment it gets very messy and you start working against your own self-interest. Again, I don't know about a league orchestrated conspiracy, but I do buy the notion that optics and politics and, hey, we haven't gotten domestic violence right, so let's be really hard on Ezekiel Elliott and prove to everybody that we're tough on domestic violence. That may have driven this decision more than justice. When the lead investigator is saying, I don't see enough here to punish Zeke with. And then you don't listen to the lead, uh, the lead investigator. You don't invite her uh, to the final decision-making process. I get why there's starting to be allegations of a conspiracy because this sounds really poorly handled. Yesterday, <clears throat> I talked about this. When we had the conversation about should the league handle these issues on their own? Should Goodell handle these things on, a, on his own? And I said, when things don't go Ezekiel's way and when they don't go Jerry Jones' way, what are they going to do? The next recourse is to take it to the courts. And that's exactly what they did last night. Okay, now, I don't believe that there's an orchestrated um, conspiracy here. But what I do believe is the NFL is trying to get a grip on this thing and set some examples and set some guidelines for how they're going to handle it. But again, they're looking really bad right now because same, the same things that we talked about yesterday are coming to fruition today, and it does not look good for them. If they, if they have to reduce this thing to three or none, zero, they're gonna look, it's going to look really bad on the NFL and Roger Goodell. Yeah, I don't think there's a conspiracy. I just think the NFL is not going to let any owner or any player, any organization, strong arm them. They're bigger, they're better, they make the final decision, bottom line. And when I look at what Goodell is doing, I don't have a problem with him laying the law down. I have no problem with that. But when it's time and when you have situations like this, domestic violence specifically, you can fall back on the legal system. Just say, you know what? This is what they found. This is what we're going off of. That's what we're doing. The legal I, system basically said there's exactly. not enough here. My point. So okay. let this one, you got to okay. let it go. I think what You're not you wrong. Said, a lot of people believe what Greg is saying is, listen, if the legal system doesn't find anything, you shouldn't. But just, just say this in defense of the NFL. The legal system, law is not always on TV. It's not the number one TV show on five networks. You don't have the advertisers. You don't have the FCC. There are guidelines that a television show, CNN, NFL, this network, there are relationships you have to protect. There's imagery. So a lot of times I, I defend leagues having a stronger regulations than the law or police because they're playing with the TV imagery. I don't have any problem with that, Colin, but at some point... You have to be ruled by facts yes. and evidence and to we... some degree. And when the lead investigator is the only one who talked to the alleged victim, and she says, and again, she is the proper pronoun, when she says, I don't think you should discipline this guy, I don't think there's enough here, and then you don't, 
That's where Jerry Jones gets upset. That's where Ezekiel Elliott and them start talking about conspiracy. And sometimes a conspiracy doesn't have to be orchestrated. It can be a conspiracy of incompetence. And I don't use that word with a lot of malicious intent. What I'm saying is they are so far out over their skis trying to suss out a dysfunctional college relationship and trying to mete out justice in that situation. They should stay out of it. Yes. They should, they should let, this is one of those rare instances perhaps, we're, this is not our jurisdiction. We're go not for, good at go this. Go ahead and say well, it. No, but, but we're not should, good at this. Exactly. And then fall back on the legal system. Well, but, that, but that's my point. That's my point. If you're always going to wind up back in the legal system, allow the legal system to set the parameters for how you deal with it. Listen, I, I would agree, but here's the other thing that I think we've gotten caught up in in America as a whole. Punishment, punishment, punishment. Punishment's always the solution. When I read through the report and all the, this highly dysfunctional college relationship, I didn't think punishment. I thought both of these people need help. The NFL, if they really wanted to mete out some justice here, they would offer this young woman some help and they would offer Zeke some help in terms of counseling. And, and they both are in a lot of trouble and need help. All right, well, the league responded to the NFLPA's conspiracy allegation this morning with VP of Communications Brian McCarty saying, quote, this legal filing is an uncontested Hail Mary. They're going to put in a number of fantastical assertions from a purely legal point of view and what the courts will look at. The CBA is clear that the commissioner has the responsibility to make these decisions. Whitlock, in recent years, Roger Goodell has been criticized for his handling of major disciplinary issues. Will he regret taking on this responsibility? I, I think without question, and, and, and what I think Brian McCarthy and the NFL may be missing out on is that the takeaway for the average person is going to be, the lead investigator, who's a female, talk, the only one to talk to the victim, says no discipline. That, that's all anyone's going to take away. They're not going to get tied down in the minutia. There's no win here for the league, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Once the lead investigator, who is a female, who's not on Zeke's side, is like, I just don't see it. I just don't see a win here for Roger Goodell. I think he regrets this. Um, I think this is why... I agree with you, major corporations have human resource departments <laughs> because you never want to put a face on discipline. I mean, let's be honest here. That's a good point. Judges, judges make mistakes on this. All like, the time. like commissioners aren't? I mean, commissioners often come from a legal background, but sometimes they don't. And they're the top sales guy. They have operational skill. I mean... I look at this situation, I'm, I'm like, Roger Goodell has become the face of punishment. Our presidents don't do that. Our CEOs don't do that. I, th I think even if, he was, if he, was, he was pretty good at it, he'd still on average whiff about every third time. I just don't think, I don't think that he's going to regret it. I don't think he does regret it. And, and it's because of the fact that when you have assigned someone to this case, they report back to you with information that we all believe is critical in saying, I, if I were you, if I were in your position of power to make the decision, the final decision, I wouldn't suspend this kid for six games. And you decide to do it anyway, you don't care. You, because you're all, it's, seriously, it, it, with everything that has already gone on with domestic violence, he's missed, hit, so many different times. It's like swinging a golf club. You hit, you hit, you miss hit, and then you try to swing harder the next time, and you, the, <laughs> yes. and, and you, it, it makes it worse. It makes it yeah. worse. This is what he's doing. He's swinging too hard, and he's making the situation worse. Well, the, the problem, in my opinion, I talked about the other day. He either needs to be totally involved with everything, or bring in a whole department to handle it. Yeah. Okay. Because he's got all of these investigators, and they gave him their opinion on what the situation was. And yeah, he swung and missed. But the problem is, he can't be judge, jury, and executioner. He, he just cannot do it. And you, Colin, you're absolutely right. To be out in front of everything, to be the face of discipline, and I know, Jason, that the players asked for this. The players wanted this. 
I think he's going to regret it because the heat is, is, is on him, something immense. And you could say, well, he got 30 plus, re 30 plus million reasons not to regret it, but there's a whole lot of other things that he could involve himself in and create a whole department that just deals with disciplinary actions. We say this about football coaches all the time, the great ones give out responsibility. Delegate. Yeah, like the great coaches delegate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Roger doesn't delegate perhaps as much. No, no, well, listen, the media baited him into this and the players baited him into this. You're, this is going to be your stamp on football. You're going to clean up this mess. You're going to be the czar of discipline. And when, when it was Pac-Man Jones and Michael Vick, everybody, oh, Roger Goodell, he's doing such a great job. He's clean. That was easy. But if you think it through and think far away down, criminal justice is never easy. Sussing out relationships and uh, the messiness of human activity is never easy. And so if, if I'm Roger Goodell, I'm just telling you, there's no shame in saying, you know what? I can't handle this. It's too much for me. We've created an, a, a whole society where, to me, everybody's trying to do too much. Everybody, in every aspect of society. We got sports writers now that grew up writing game stories that now want to talk about social and political issues on television. We got a president who was a reality TV star who wants to be president. Everybody in America is trying to do too much. No one wants to pick a lane, have some expertise in that, and just stay in that lane and be an expert in that. We can do it all. We've created a society where everybody can do it all, everybody can have it all. It's not working out for us. But it's always been that way. The more you can do. I mean, even, even, even when we played even we played in the league, the coaches used to say, oh, the more you can do. Absolutely. I mean, I come in the league as an eighth-round pick, playing on special teams, playing on show team. I'm out there playing wide receiver, running back. Playing I'm playing, football. Every, every, playing everywhere. football. I get that. You ain't but trying to meet out discipline. I get in that, the, but, the, but, but, but what is where where is value at the end of the day? The value is determined by how much how good you are in a thing and how many good how many things you Michael can Jackson be good. Jackson made records. Yeah, he danced. Elvis he made danced. Records. He danced he too. Danced <laughs> I like an expert. Welcome back, Greg Jennings here. Joined now by our Fox Buddy Sports Radio. Host Doug Gottlieb. Let's move to Boston. Fun day. The Celtics introduced their two big offseason acquisitions, and we finally heard from the man everybody's been talking about the past few weeks, Gordon Hayward. Okay, not really. <laughs> Kyrie Irving was front and center. And when he was asked about LeBron, his response made us uh, do a double take. What's your relationship like with LeBron now, and have you spoken to him since this whole process began with asking for the trade? Um, no. I haven't uh, spoken to him. No. I haven't uh, spoken to him. All right, Whitlock, should LeBron have done more to repair the relationship with Kyrie? Absolutely. And I hope that sure. pride didn't stand in the way here of, oh, I don't want to beg the guy. I don't want to go out. I don't want to do that because he may tell me no. You know, the, the only women I regret are the women I didn't ask out. You know, you can't be in the game unless you ask. And so LeBron James should have got down and begged this guy to stay because he's a guy who can help him win championships. It's on LeBron to be the bigger man. There's no shame if, if Kyrie had told him no. Hell yeah, LeBron should have done more. It's not, it's not should he have done more. should have done anything. <laughs> he didn't yeah. do anything, yeah. Colin. Nothing. Nothing. He's, he's, he's not only the best, he's also the youngest star teammate that he's had. And he walked out the door, and he didn't just like, hey, man, you want to think twice about it. And look, when the second that you stop having a conversation with a significant other, that relationship is done. In business relationships, in television shows, in radio shows, and in basketball teams or football teams, you stop talking, there's no relationship. There's obviously no relationship there if he didn't even do anything. But what do you, first of all, you know what Kyrie Irving was? He was this really talented actor who'd been in like three or four straight lousy movies. And then LeBron said, my young, my young son, why don't you join my movie? I'm going to take you to the Oscars three straight years. You'll win one. And he's got to do more. Kyrie's career was, this kid can't make a movie by himself. He can't carry a movie. Now, Boston's like... He was like, 19 and 20, Absolutely. Colin. I'm thinking oh, the same thing. Yeah. He was young. Duke. 
franchise money. He was hurt when he was at Duke. He played like the television. He was, he was this close to being Keanu Reeves. Now he's Ryan <laughs> Gosling. Keanu wow. Reeves is in the Matrix. Keanu Reeves has been wow. in some pretty big flicks, dude. Now, now Kyrie Irving is everybody's Ryan Gosling. He's Jamie Foxx. He gets anything he wants. Look, I'm a LeBron fan, but when you, when you pretty much can say and do and orchestrate everything, there was something in this in that in that statement that he said that that stood out to me. He said, now that I'm sitting here, this is Kyrie, is just being very appreciative of not only the Cleveland fans, he didn't say the Cleveland organization, and all of Ohio, but for Bron incorporating me, not the Cleveland Cavaliers, for Bron incorporating me into that special team. He understood at some point, he is running the show. It's all about him. And when you bring what you feel is just as much to the table, yeah. which we all understand. Yeah, you can he feel that. He doesn't bring everything that LeBron brings to the table, but he brings a whole lot. And I, I can speak from experience because I've been in a situation where a lot of outsiders don't know what took place on the inside and what was said from a teammate's perspective. And so once that happens, that relationship is over. It's, there is, it's non-existent. LeBron took it for granted. And the man bounced. How about Le Kyrie took LeBron for granted? Well, listen, if you decide to date a younger person, you have to be the more mature person. And so Kyrie is a younger person. LeBron is the king of the league. He's the most powerful guy in the league. He's the leader. He needed to work the relationship with Kyrie. He's dating a younger person in his career or whatever. Manage that situation. Don't ignore it. Don't think I'm doing you a favor letting you play with me because this is the end result. The guy, a very t the most talented teammate he's ever had just bounced on him and went to the Boston. I got to be with Jason on this one. I mean, he, like, it, again, even if it was a relationship doomed to, to, to uh, fail, fail to exist, right, right to right. fail, the fact that he didn't reach out and pick up the phone and just go, hey, man, you sure you want to do this? Like, we, we still have at least a year together or whatever. And we need to stop the nonsense about the first three years of his career. He wasn't healthy. They completely destroyed the team after LeBron left. Half the players were gone. He was 19, 20, 21 years old. No one was winning in that organization when they were drafting Anthony Bennett number one overall. It was a disaster I regardless. I like Jordan's first three years either. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we, we talk about legacy. This is what players and fans remember when we talk about legacy. Not all the way, all the time about how many games or how many championships you won. How did you handle your teammates? How did your teammates view you? And in this particular instance, LeBron definitely owed it not only to Kyrie, but even to himself and, no other, and the other brotherhood teammates in that locker room to at least reach out. By the way, Kyrie Irving is still a ball-centric point guard. Who hit the game-winning shot and won them an NBA Finals. Oh, good Lord. Who got him there? I, I, I get that. Is I'm talking about who hit the game-winning shot, big part of the reason why they're there, best finisher in the league. He's 25 years old. The all, you, all you got to say is that they get it done the year Kyrie was hurt. And I'm a LeBron guy. I, they didn't get it done. A lot of people have been comparing the LeBron-Kyrie split to another major NBA breakup, Shaq and Kobe, and there may be some evidence that the connection goes even deeper. Kobe and Kyrie have been close for years, and the Black Mama even tweeted recently that some people have accused him of influencing Kyrie's decision to leave. I gotta tell you, I think he did. I think Kyrie Irving has idolized Kobe Bryant. For you, he's not a Michael guy, he's not a Magic guy, he's not a LeBron guy. He grew up idolizing Kobe. Both of them had dads that were basketball players of some note. Both of them grew up overseas. I think Kobe has been in his ear this entire time. Get your own team. Get your own franchise. This guy doesn't appreciate you. I had to make a tough call with Shaq. You make a tough call with LeBron. I, I think Kobe, you don't watch Game of Thrones, but I think he's Littlefinger. And he's manipulated uh, uh, Arya into going against Sansa, who's LeBron. I don't disagree. The basketball culture is really interesting, where it's the only sports culture where you wear your idol shoes as a kid. So you feel closer than you would like to a golfer or to a hockey player. You wear Kobe's shoes for 13 years, and then you are in the league with Kobe, and on certain nights you play against Kobe. 
and there is a real kinship in basketball. I, I don't doubt it. I think NBA legends hold, I mean, God, guys, they wear their, they wore Michael's gear and they wear Kobe's shoes and they use the same numbers. And I, I think it's possible. I think your argument's a pretty good one. Um, aren't you a Howard Stern guy? Isn't that, that, that yeah, you're... that's why I swear regularly on the air. <laughs> 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 but, but it's like interesting, like we, we've all left the place uh, and you know, you kind of, I, I had already left, but you we kind of led people out the door, right? And one reason was you said, hey, Howard Stern has kind of influenced me, trying my own thing. I, right. I think influencing is, is one thing. I think telling somebody to leave LeBron is another. That's it. I don't think he did that. I, I, also, I, think, I also think there's an alignment with a better organization. Like Cleveland yeah. as an organization is a joke, okay? Because of something that Greg said earlier, which is, hey, look, his agent has deals with half the players in the team, and the agent is way too powerful. The owner and the player are fighting. It's not a destination where anybody would ever be there if not for LeBron James being like, I, I do think that Kobe can, can, can counsel him. Kobe can tell him how to, how to win public perception, to be aligned with a better organization. I don't think it's as simple as, hey, you got to get away from LeBron. I do think it, it was more like, hey, you have to put yourself in position so that you can be a legendary player because you have legendary player skill. I agree 100% with, with that, Doug. It, it, here it is. When you have a relationship with somebody like a Kobe Bryant, you're definitely going to converse with them when you're getting ready to make a huge decision for yourself, which is what Kyrie did. He made the decision for himself, but I'm sure, like other situations that he's been in, when it's playing in the NBA Finals, hitting a big shot, face, FaceTiming Kobe, you converse with those who you really trust. And so I believe that there was some level of influence in the conversations that had been had, but ultimately... Kyrie made the decision for himself to do what was best for him to give him a better opportunity to get from behind and outside of a shadow that he would have stayed under with LeBron, bottom line. I, I'm not saying this negatively no, about, not at Kobe, all. No. about Kobe, I, but I'm telling you, I think Kobe planted seeds. Sure. And again, th there's a subtle, there's a long manipulation. Why, rather than why though? Because Kobe Bryant has an ego just like everybody and Kobe's else. Kobe's always but, but, felt. But how does this how does this help Kobe's ego? Uh, because it hurts LeBron. Thank you. So, Le so you think LeBron that, that Kobe wants to be viewed better than LeBron all the time? The biggest regret in Kobe's career is he never got to take LeBron down in the finals. I agree with that. And that Kobe Bryant had, had never... and Kobe Bryant right now to this day, man, they have known it. Uh, LeBron better than me. LeBron comes out, I'm chasing the ghost of Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant said, I got five rings. You got to pass me first. And he just manipulated Kyrie, and I'm not even saying it negatively, but just made it, it's going to be a lot harder for, uh, for LeBron to ever get to that fourth but, and fifth chance. What about the idea that LeBron's ultimately going to come to the Lakers and may receive as much or more love than even Kobe Bryant with the Lakers? But he I mean, won't be as successful. Gonna... I don't think he will either. Yeah, and they're, they're... You think LeBron's going to come here and get more love than Kobe? Have I you think, met these I, Kobe stands? I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but again, remember, it's what have you done for me lately? Absolutely. He, he shows up. He's LeBron. At he's 35? Got, it doesn't matter. Okay, look, you're talking reality. I'm talking Los Angeles. Yes. Los Angeles is reality. They, they know each other. They met each other in the hallway, but they are not friends. LeBron James is... Like, they think Magic Johnson knows what he's doing. He doesn't. Magic okay. has five titles right here in As Los a Angeles. player, absolutely. But I get it. Yeah. I get the delusion with Magic. But you're not going to tell me L.A. is going to come here and suck up LeBron's scraps Just at the end this. of his career. Let's go back to the... And treat him it, like he's Kobe. But it, you can imagine Kobe and Kyrie sitting down. Kobe was initially drafted by Charlotte, right? right? Well, okay. it was a draft day trade, but okay. yeah. Okay, but, but Kobe said, listen, man, I was almost in Charlotte. And as great as I am, I would have never been Kobe in Charlotte. You started in Cleveland. That, 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 that's kind of what I was getting at. But also but, remember, so why remember choose Kobe Paul? wanted to be traded. Kobe went on the radio. Kobe said, I want out. Yep. He wanted to go to Chicago. Right. Again, yep. Kobe's already been down this path, and he was ready to do it. But Jim, the Bus family went another direction no. and got rid of Shaq. So I, listen, I, do, I think we all agree that Kobe had some level of influence. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just I just don't think it's as sinister as I'm I, want, I want yeah, a little bit. Where you're just like, look, <laughs> I don't want him to win as many titles as me. He does. Because 
I'm sure he doesn't. Nobody who nobody who holds a record ever wants somebody to pass that oh, record. Wait, Anyone who says chance, that is a liar. You have a chance to influence the. You don't want the guy to get there, and you have a chance to make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah, but you he's, pass. But I he's going to come to the Lakers, which is his home. But, but if you really don't like LeBron, you don't want him wearing the purple and gold. LeBron doesn't need under or, Magic's guidance. I would. Kobe doesn't need to say it to think it. Yes. Like I would. If I was anti somebody at our former employer, I wouldn't advertise it. I'd say this place is way better. Yeah. But if I knew it hurt the other guy, I don't think Kobe said, do this, it'll really screw LeBron over. No. But in the back of his mind, there's a little gamesmanship. Watch little, little Th there's game also, game. I, do, there's I, do, I do, I do. I've so many people are watching the show, I have to watch it. It's it, really try, important it to point out. Try Ozark. It's, it's shorter, it's, it's very it's good. It's really important <laughs> to point out that Shaq was more was more beloved than Kobe until until Shaq left. And then, only then did Kobe feel the love. That for whatever reason, Kobe could never feel the love Got until Shaq. Doug Gottlieb is back, and we're joined now by Fox Sports college football analyst Dave Wanstead. Let's move to Jim Harbaugh, who hasn't had the best week with Florida coach Jim McElwain and longtime nemesis Nick Saban, both taking pot shots at the attention-seeking Harbaugh. Harbaugh is now in his third season in Ann Arbor, but is yet to make the playoff or beat Ohio State or win his division in the Big Ten. Cowherd, is this a make or break season for your guy, Jim Harbaugh? Break is in fired? Break is no, in do or just, die? As Ma in me talking smack on him <laughs> and you. Well, listen. Crowning this guy. The first time I really thought about Jim Harbaugh is when he took a team into the Coliseum and was a 40 point underdog and beat Pete Carroll. And I was like, what? Was that for the national championship? Uh, no. See, what's your deal, bro? Game. Yeah. That, that's what's what your deal, bro? Long handshake, right? Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, my bro. point is, he can coach. Now, he's not beating Ohio State. Gosh, guess what? Nobody's beating Amazon, Facebook, Google, Apple. Who's beating outside of Clemson, Ohio State? Because Your he job can't... at Michigan is to beat Ohio State, Colin. I'm from the Midwest. That's the job. I've flown he over it several it. times. <laughs> he, he signed up for it. That's the job. Well, that job's unrealistic. Because if you can beat them one in three years, Ohio State's a better football program than Michigan. Sorry, yeah, it is. It's been five. It's been five years since they've been there. But I look at Jim. You know, I I, co I know Jim very well. I coached him when, at the Bears. He was my quarterback. You guys know that. And Jim, you know, he's done more to. Uh, bring the brand of Michigan yes. back than than anyone thought he could possibly do in a short amount Can I of time. Stop you there. I'm gonna let you go again. He's brought the brand of Jim Harbaugh back. The Michigan brand, I disagree. Well, with. recruiting is uh, very good. Wait, wait. Who had more yeah. players oh, draft? Who had more players yeah. drafted in the NFL draft last year than Michigan? The top, Brady Hoke did. The, Thank the, you. The and, <laughs> and Brady Hoke can't coach. He didn't even have headphones he on. Him. Huh? He recruited him. Go, I'm sorry, Dave. No, no. I, I mean, we're, we're going to find out. This is this is a real interesting game. We're talking Michigan, though. You know, because of all the players that have graduated, we're going to find out exactly how well he's he's recruited. You know, I mean, the talent and not as much recruited, but you got to give Urban Meyer credit for this. Urban develops these young players. Thank you. You know, so we got to see. Now, what would make a – I don't think Michigan's going to win the Big Ten this year, but you know what? I think they're going to have a great chance to beat Ohio State in Ann Arbor. And if they beat Ohio State, they have a successful year. Am I missing something? Didn't, didn't he build San Diego and was Josh Johnson was the oh, quarterback? I mean, who wait, can wait. forget those San Diego uh, <laughs> Wait, wait. You're right. Stanford, Stanford either won zero or one they game. They were terrible, he, Buddy Tevin. Well, and they won a national oh, – no, 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 they didn't. I'm sorry. Well, but, but hold on. Did, did he build Stanford into a winner? Yes, okay. a terrific team. San Francisco, San Francisco was was, was like wandering in the Oklahoma State basketball. San Diego was wandering. I mean, excuse me, the San Francisco 49ers were wandering in the desert abyss for years. Coach after coach, coordinator after oh, they coordinator. Didn't want to oh no, they didn't. But wait, wait. Just winning the last game is not exactly what sports when is about. When you compare him to Nick Saban and Bill Belichick and all these other guys that Colin compares him to, yeah. you got to win a national championship well, or Super Bowl at some it, point. It, it's you coming. Giving away titles. Listen, listen it's coming. People earn them. Wait, wait, that man sitting right there, he yeah. understands. The, he understands this. And you do. You hold on, hold on. That's and you do as ring. you do as well from playing football. The hardest thing to change in the culture of the program. You can change the personnel, you can get better athletes, which he's done. You can change the culture of the fans and the belief. It's getting over that hump of learning how to win games that win championships. That's the hardest thing to teach. And last year they lose, what, three games by five points. They're this close. 
Okay, and Michigan yeah. hasn't won big since 1998. They're the winningest all-time program in college football, but their facilities were bad. Their recruiting was okay. They couldn't figure out a style. This guy will do it. No one outside of Ann, Ann Arbor thinks otherwise. And whether or not they beat Ohio State this year or not should not determine whether or not you know, he's a success there this year. You know, can I just, maybe I'm wrong on this, but when I think of football factory, I think of Alabama over the whole university. I think of Ohio State, whole university. Florida State, I think football. But Michigan is a little like Texas. It's also a world-class school. Absolutely. So, so Michigan. Wisconsin. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but let's, let's say to the biggest eight football brands. Michigan and Texas, Oklahoma is football first school. Right. Texas, school football. I'd argue Michigan, school football. I would it too. may be a little harder to win at Michigan oh, so now we got no, than Alabama. No, it's not, it's now we got name. excuses. It's look, look, the, their recruiting classes every year with Brady Holt Good. and with Jim Harbaugh were great. Look at the competition <clears throat> Michigan plays yeah. every year. Big I mean, Ten's never been they're, better. They're, I mean, well, in their division, that's, too. It, look, they've, least, they've, that's they have they they have ended Michigan State's reign of terror. Michigan State dominated that division. Not anymore. Michigan State is not a player I just, now. I just yep. One day I would love for us to talk about James Franklin, who's actually won the Big Ten, He's do the way we talk about Jim Harbaugh. Can we show Brady Holt's first two-year record versus Jim Harbaugh's two-year record? Oh, look at that. Yeah, but Almost State, identical. Penn State was on probation. Almost identical. Hold on. Come up with excuses. That's that, an excuse. That's is, a reason. But your record is. <laughs> Bill a, Parcells said it uh, best. You know Bill Parcells. I know. Your what. record is what your record is. That That's... So, he, so is that a good record for Jim, or was a it good a good record, record for Brady? It's a good what do you record saying? for both of them. Okay. But we talk about Harbaugh like his record includes a national championship or something so much more than what Brady Hoke or other people at Michigan have done. Y'all act like Michigan football was at the bottom of the barrel, damn near a mid-major when he took over, and that's just a load of crap. You don't remember how bad they were in Brady's last year? <clears throat> Nobody you, you, don't, you don't remember how embarrassing they were in Brady's last year. I know you like Brady, and Brady did win at Ball State, and Brady did win at San Diego State, but they were awful his last year, they Jason. They had a bad year. It was a blip on the radar. Based on the history of Michigan, who thought they were going to be down forever with all that defensive and pro talent they had returning? They had a bad you year. Like they couldn't get the right you're, you're quarterback. Like, you're, you're like, like relitigating a court case you lost. You think they're going to beat Florida? I want Florida to beat them so I can come. Do you, you think? That, do you think right. they're? You think they're going to beat them? I want Florida to beat them. You do. You Michigan. do. You I do. love Michigan, but you know, just because I want like, to talk about Chris Coward. Broussard. Chris Broussard says I love LeBron, and then rips him for five minutes. I lived you in Arizona. You keep telling me you love two Michigan. Years. My college coach was a Bo Schembechler knockoff. We. I love Michigan. I love them. I just want Harbaugh to prove something rather than y'all just handing it to him as if he's done what James Franklin has done or done more than what Brady Hoke was doing. Brady Hoke was doing a fine job. He had a little blip. I will say up. James Franklin deserves more credit. Thank that you. part I like.